All right, so here I'm, I'm gonna give you kind of a rundown of my initial game plan. Game plans can always change, but, uh, and kind of some little bit of the details of this trailer that needs to be noted and um, needs to be probably changed uh, to better fit the needs of a mobile bar, mobile catering, mobile what, coffee bar, whatever you're gonna turn this into. So here, uh, is a rundown of kind of the game plan and kind of the needs that I see initially. Okay, so kind of what I'm going to do is go through a quick overview. Now, this is also stuff that you can take into account when you're looking at buying your trailer, whether you've already bought it or not, or when you go look at it. Um, the jack's in good shape. Um, I'll put some longer chains on there. Um, the lights, the, the wiring is relatively new, but I'll probably go ahead and run new wiring. It does need the connector there. The, the main thing that stands out on this is if you notice, instead of the rivets, see they've, this was not originally gray. It literally looks really sharp gray, but it was a, it was white or a cream color. And so they took a lot of this trim off to repaint. So they didn't paint over the trim which that's good because a lot of people will just paint over the trim and then you got to take all that paint off. But it's also downside is that they didn't go back with rivets. They went back with these, these little uh, sheet metal screws, which aren't awful, but like on this, on this really cool trim that I like to save and reuse, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to reuse it just for the simple fact that um, the rivet holes are offset now on a lot of this. So I'll show you how to, you know, we'll remove those. Of course, it's just a drill, uh, with a little bit on it. Um, and then they, they did paint over the aluminum on the butterfly vents. So I'll drill out these rivets, put new butterfly vents on, um, the doors, they've got these, they probably lost the key. So they've got these padlock latches that I'll be removing. Um, all of this, this door trim, I'll remove that. And it's in real good shape. You know, there's a couple dents and dings, but that really adds character to your final product. Um, this flashing, this is all rock guard is what it's called. I like to remove all that and replace it with some diamond tread aluminum, just cause it looks really sharp. These, these uh, latches here, I'll replace and I'll put latches on that have a little spot where you could put a padlock on. It just makes the trailer more secure since we're actually gonna have valuable things in here and not just use it only for hauling horses. Um, I'll try to clean this up. This has got, this is your manufacturer nameplate. It's been painted over, of course, but the serial number can still be seen. So that's good to have. Um, the wheels are in great shape. The tires, there's a little bit of dry rot, so I may have to replace the tires. I may not. I'll just see how I feel about it. Um, but the hubs will need replaced. There's several of them. It's really, really common on these horse trailers because they get abused and they go down rough roads and people over tighten them and you end up with missing missing lug bolts okay so that's something to consider these windows i'll pull these out i've already started to remove a little bit of the trim that was put on this is all put on by screws too the good thing is on this bigger trim they put the screws right in the uh the rivet holes so that's good another thing i like to do especially on these ww's with the two two windows and there's that this is metal behind that flashing is I'll cut that metal out and make it a bigger wraparound window. We'll cover that on how to do that. Um, this door, of course, this has got another padlock hinge. I'll put locking handles on those so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so the game plan is on this side, 
My serving window, I usually like to go 20 inches from this top. There's a frame in there, piece of frame, to go 20 inches and have that be the opening. That puts your bar at a comfortable height for the people outside and a comfortable height for the servers inside, in my opinion. Um, people may have varying opinions on that. I haven't decided whether or not this, the way this door opens, it opens up this way. I might like to have it open up that way and have like uh, to where you could put a menu or something like that or pass through larger items or something like that on that side. So I may flip this door and put the hinges on that side and the handle on this side, if that makes sense. So I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna do that. Um, so something I'll do, I'll pull all this wood out the bottoms of these doors are actually in pretty good shape because it's a newer model and it's actually been taken care of pretty good. Something to look for is, you know, you'll, you'll end up with rust. A lot of times the, the bottoms of those doors will be rusted out. And a lot of times this back plate will be rusted out. That's not the case here. So that's actually really good. Um, so what I'll be doing is I've pulled one of the mats out already. See the floor is in decent shape. These are actually, I believe, two by 12s. Um, I usually go with two by 10s, just cause they're a little bit cheaper and put them across here. Um, and I just think the more, those more boards look a little bit better. I might go with two by 12s, it might work out good though. It looks like it worked out pretty good for them. There's some gaps though, I like to avoid the gaps, the floor and a trailer that's actually gonna be serving and stuff out of. I'll pull this divider out. Like I said, I'll, I'll take all this wood out. One thing I might try to do on this, cause see this metal's in good shape. This metal's in good shape. A lot of times I remove that metal and go with all wood. And so the exterior and interior will be the same wood. I might try to leave that metal on the outside and put the wood on the inside. Go back with some, some nice high grade plywood on the inside. Um, I haven't made my mind up yet. That's just initial game plan thinking. Um, so you do have to, I'll replace the floor. The, uh, I'll remove, I'll remove this divider. I'll also cut out, this is not structural guys. I know a lot of people think it is or wonder if it is. This is not structural. This is just this bar that's welded to the top there. I'll cut that off. That's all that's for is to give a structure for this divider to hang on. There's no other point of that. It doesn't serve another purpose. There's enough framing and structure in underneath all this metal to, to support that. So you don't really got to worry about it. Um, I will, I'll cut these ring tie off rings. Um, and then I'll also put a new vent up there, a low profile vent. And so, I mean, this thing's in really good shape, but uh, that's just my game plan. I'm also thinking about leaving a window or putting a plexiglass window in on that side, just to kind of save on some fabrication on that side. I think it would look really cool too. I've never done that. So I may do that. I just think it would look neat to have a plexiglass window, you know, take that out and have a full plexiglass window on that side. I just think that might, it might look neat, it might look really cool. So I might go with that, we'll see. And then this side, that's that, that's that frame rail I was telling you about. So 20 inches from there to the bottom is tends to be, it tends to be about 36 inches from the floor. And that's, a, that's about the height of your kitchen counter, if you think about that. So that's the height that you're used to working at. So that's, that's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, but I'd like to hear, I mean, if you've got other opinions on that, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Uh, for some reason they, they went back and they put in all these sheet metal screws to hold those boards in. Whereas if you got, well, that's why it's cause it's missing uh, that bottom board. If you've got all your boards in and the bottom board, then you don't have to worry about that. We'll cover that when I get there, but that's initial game plan. I'll put in, I'll put in, I'll go ahead and run some new lights. Um, I think I use, so on my serving window, I usually go with a window that 
that folds up and it's got the gas struts kind of like on your rear door of an SUV um, to hold it up. But I actually kind of am growing. Initially, I didn't think I didn't like it, but I'm starting to really grow on that. Putting the pole, the pole support, you know, there were people have a, put a pole here, a wooden pole or a metal pole, and it comes up and it holds your door up. I just think it looks, adds more of a rustic charm, rustic feel to it. So I may go that route on this one. Um, and that's it. That's my game. That's my initial game plan. That's my initial thoughts. Um, you know, I'll be replacing hubs and doing some fab work. I'll be tearing everything down. I'll show you how to drill out uh, rivets, of course. A lot of people are always curious about that on how to drill out rivets. I'll show you how to do that, how I do it anyway.